So today we're going to talk about percent problems. Uh, it's going to involve like interest rate and so forth. By the way, what's that? Like, let's say the bank gives you one percent interest rate, okay, per year. So let's say you put hundred dollars in your bank. After a year, how much do you get? Yes, sir. One dollar, right? One percent of hundred dollars is what? One dollar. But you get that per year. Okay, that's the only problem. <coughs> It'd be nice if you get it every day, right? But that doesn't happen. But you know, when they give you interest. Uh, one percent per year, right? After each year, whatever money you put in the bank, they give you an interest rate, okay? Because they use that money to invest and stuff like that, and hopefully they make money, and so they give you for they, you know, give you money for you know putting your money into their bank, okay? Uh, same thing happens with stock and bonds. Just think about them as like some stock, you know. But right now these days stocks are not doing so well. But let's say that. You know, and all the stocks in math problem, they all do well. Okay? They don't go down for some reason. But, but we, but, you know. So let's say you invested like for some stock, $100 after a year, and they gave you an interest rate of 1%. How much do you get? A dollar. But what if the company did really well, and they gave you 50% interest of that money you invested? So let's say you invested $100 after a year. How much do you get? $50. So after, so after all that, you get... $50 on top of how much you invested, right? So let's say that, okay, that you tell them, okay, I want my money back. How much money get money back do you get at the very end? 150. 150. Isn't that nice? Okay, but of course, that really doesn't happen. Uh, so that's the kind of problem we're going to talk about. So how do you figure out these interest rate problems? Well, first of all, these are simple. You need to understand the simple interest formula. Okay. So this is an example that I just talked about. If you invest $100, okay, to a bank, that gives you a you know one percent interest, you get a dollar. So how do you calculate this interest? You know what I mean? Does everybody know how, what the formula is? How do you calculate this uh, interest? Yeah. Um, it's sort of like a rate times time. Yeah, it's kind of like rate times time, isn't it? Rate times time equals distance. So instead of time and distance, you have rate times what? The yeah, the amount you invested, right? The more you invest, more money you get, right? At the end, equals to. What is the money that you get? What is that money called? It's called simple interest. There you go. So write this down on the on top of your worksheet. On top, this is what you need. The formula is amount you invested times the annual interest rate gives you that simple interest. It gives you that money. So this is what we need, okay? Amount invested times the interest rate, annual interest rate. It's usually annual, okay? Annual means every year, right? So amount invested times annual interest rate gives you the simple interest. Okay, that's the, okay. write that down. All right, for example, you know how we had that $100? If you invested $100, right? For 1%, how much do you get at the end of the year? $1, because 100, 100 times, what does 1% really mean? 1 over 100, right? Percent means 1 over 100, right? So it just means 100 times 1 over 100, you get 1, right? So that's how you get $1. So that, see, the formula works, okay? Of course, you're not going to get hundred dollars every time, right? It's going to be different the amount that you invest. Okay. So this works for your bank, for uh, your homework tonight. When they talk about stock and bonds, you could think about it as kind of like bank. Okay, same thing. Okay. Even though stock and bonds, you know, in real life, <laughs> many times you're risking a lot, right? Because they don't guarantee that you get these right, interest. But we'll just, you know. Take it as it is, okay? Here we go. All right, who wants to read for us our first problem here? How about, let me pick somebody. Here we go. How about, um, Dominic, can you read this for us? So, what is this saying? This question. What did Jerry do? Yes, Ronnie. He invested eight thousand dollars. So that's the money that he has. He's investing this amount of money, right? And it gave him how much after this? After a year, how much did he gain? 
class. Five hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> Does that make sense? That's what? What is five hundred fifty dollars? That's the that's the that's the interest that he got from investing five thousand dollars. Does that make sense? Often people get that mixed up. Right? They don't know how much they don't understand the you know money that they invest versus the invest the interest that they got. Yeah, he invested eight thousand dollars. He got five hundred fifty dollars after investing this amount of money, and thankfully, right, his stock. Uh, so part of he, I guess he invested in two stocks, right? Part of his stock gave you eight percent. The other gave you how much? Six point five percent. Okay. How many unknowns do we have in this? Show me with your fingers. How many unknowns do we have? Very good. A lot of you understand. There are a one hundred percent participation here. How many unknowns here? There are how many? Two is correct. Okay. What are the unknowns? Uh, how about Kyle? There, there are two stocks. Let's call it stock A and stock B or something. Okay. How much money was invested in stock A and how much money was invested in stock? B, right? What's the difference between these two stocks? One stock gave you how much? 8%, right? The other gave you how much? 6.5. And at this point, you may say, wait a minute. Why didn't he invest all his money to the one that gave you more money, right? But what's the problem? Going in, do you know how much they're going to give you money? No, you don't. You're investing. So that's the difference between like, the stock and like bank. Bank, they tell you how much money you're going to get, right? So those are usually a lot lower, right? For these stocks, you're kind of investing. You're, you're kind of hoping that they do well. Okay, so at the end of the year, that's how much they give you because that's how well they did. Does that make sense? Of course, going in, if you knew how much they're going to give you back, of course, you would invest all your money to one of them that right, gives you the most yield. Right? Of course, money and interest. Anyway, so there, those are the two unknowns. How are we going to declare this? Let X to be what? How much he invests in? One of the stock, right? Then what's the other amount? Because we have two unknowns. How much money he invested on both of these stocks? How would you represent it? I want you to discuss with your group. I'll wait. Go ahead. What do you think? Well, how do we do this? How many people did this so far? Let X to be how much money he invested in 8% stock, right? Now, I claim to you that you could actually represent the other unknown, which is how much he invested in, what's the other one? 6.5% stock. You could figure this out. How? Using one variable, you could do this. Indira, what do you think? 8,000 minus X. Correct. It's 8,000 minus X. Indira, why is it 8,000 minus X? Where did you get that from? Yeah, 8,000 is total amount of money he had to invest, right? If he invested X amount, right, the other must be 8,000 minus X by logic. Does that make sense? And this only works because there are only two things, right? If there were three things, it won't work like this, right? If there are more than two things. So th because there's only two things we're investing, if you let X to be how much you invest for 8,000, I mean 8%, 8,000 minus X is how much you invested in 6.5. Now here's a, here's a place where a lot of people make a mistake. They do this. Instead of 8,000 minus X, they do $550 minus X. Would that be correct? No. no. Why not? Why wouldn't that work? Why would you not do 550 minus X? Okay. Yes, John? Well, the problem is asking for how much money was invested, not the income. Exactly. 550 is your income, right? You don't do five, 550 minus X, right? Please don't make that mistake. Do you understand what we're saying? $8,000 is how much you're investing. At the end, like Jonathan says, five fifty dollars is how much income you got from both of these stocks. <coughs> you, get, you get what we're trying to say here? Okay. All right. You are correct. You could have actually uh, declared your variable for 6.5% as X, and then, of course, for 8%, it would be 8,000 minus X. At the end, you get the same result. Right? Right? Okay, so what is then, how are we going to figure out our equation? Well, just like rate times time equals distance, guess what? What is the formula that we got? It's amount we invested times what? Interest rate, kind of like right, rate times time. Instead of time, it's the amount you invested, right? How much you invested times the rate gives you the what? Interest, so there's our formula. And we're going to, just like the rate times time equals distance, we're going to uh, form a chart, okay? So let me show you the chart, right? So there's a formula, and then to do the chart, I'm going to do amount, right, times rate gives you the interest. Is that okay? Yes? Do you see how it's very similar to rate times time equals distance? Instead of time, that's the amount you're investing. Instead of distance, that's how much 
income you get or the in, uh, interest, right? And there are two things. One of them is the 8%, the other is 6.5% stock. We have two different types of stock, right? Okay, go ahead and fill out the rest of the blanks then. See if you could do that. I'll wait for you. That's the chart we're going to use, just like rate times time equals distance, right? Uh, fill in the chart. Go ahead, everybody try. I'll wait. Okay, I'm glad a lot of you got the rate correct. I mean, amount correct. For the amount, how many people wrote this? X, whoops. X for the 8%, and then, of course, 8,000 minus X. How many people got this rate? Let me see. Okay, good. What about the rate? How much rate do you get <laughs> for 8%? Ria? Oh, one hundred. Oh, okay. But what do you, let, me, let me see if you can help me. For 8% interest stock, what do you think the rate is? Uh, 8 over 100? Yeah, 8% is 8 over 100, right? What does 8% mean? 8 over 100. What about 6.5%? Yeah, so notice what I did here. 8% is really 0 0.08. For these, you could use decimals, okay? And then for 6.5%, doesn't that mean 0 0.065, right? Because it's 6.5 over 100, right? If you divide something by 100, doesn't it become 0 0.065? For these, so you could just use, um, if you like, you could use fractions. It's up to you. But you could use, just use the decimals if you like. And of course, what is the interest that you get from 8% then, of course? You just simply multiply the amount times the rate. Who could tell me what we get there? How about... Um, Zareth, what do I write for interest that we from 8%? The interest for 8% mm -hmm. is 0 0.08. Very good. What about the interest for 6.5%? Grace? What do you think? Yeah. For 6.5%, uh, what would you write? We just simply multiply the amount which is 8,000 minus X times the interest rate, which is 6.5%, which is, what's 6.5% as a regular decimal? Yeah, 0 0.065. So you just multiply 0 0.065 times the amount, which is? You got it, that's it. Okay. Does that make sense? You guys get that? Okay, please remember, what do you think people will make a mistake on these type of questions? Instead of 8%, Instead of point, putting in 0 0.08, guess what they write? 0 0.8, or they just write 8. You got to convert percent into a decimal. Because if you just multiply number by 8, is that, a, is that, point, a, is that 8% or does that mean 800%? 800%, you're multiplying the number by 8. That means that's 800%, not 8%. Does that make sense? So please do not write 8x here. And then please don't write 6.5 times this. That'll be wrong. Okay, so I'm going to highlight that. So you, oops. So here, please write down the correct percent there, right? Don't write 8x or 6.5, right, times the amount. You gotta convert them into a decimal. Is that okay, guys? Or if you like, if you, li you can leave it as a fraction, it's up to you. Is that okay? I'm just gonna convert it to decimals, okay? Then of course, what is our equation? How about, Elisa, what do you think of here? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It goes 8,000. Is it 8,000? Because these gives you the interest. 550. 8,000 is how much you invested. Okay, please don't make the mistake. That's why I highlighted this one here too. Okay, guys? When you add the interest together, it doesn't equal to how much you invested. It goes to how much you gained, which was $550. Does that make sense? Okay, please. Okay, please be careful. I'm gonna press even start on that one. Here. Okay. Yeah. So I'll move it up a little bit. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So write this down and see if we can solve this. Now. Of course. How do I solve this equation then? What's the easiest way to get rid of all these decimals? Yes, Jonathan. Multiply by two hundred. Oh, multiply both sides by two hundred. Okay, you could do that. I'm just I'm just gonna multiply both sides by a thousand. Is that okay? To get rid of all the decimals. But if you do that, you know, if you left it as a uh, fraction, it may be a little bit easier. I'm going to multiply both sides by 1,000. Do you mind if I do that? Because I, I want to get rid of all the decimal points. And because, look, 0 0.065, it goes all the way up to 1,000th place, correct? So let's multiply both sides by 1,000. And of course, you have two terms on the left, and then you got one term. Somebody tell me what we get when we do this. How about Kyle? Can you tell me what we get?
No, I'm just going to multiply both sides by 1,000, so I could get rid of all the decimals. It's kind of like multiplying both sides by the LCD, sort of. So what do I get if I multiply 1,000 times 0.08x? 80x, very good. What do I get on this? Yeah. Times? Yeah. Do I distribute this 1,000 to 8,000 and x here in the middle, inside the binary? No, you're multiplying three things. Again, when you multiply three things, you multiply two at a time. You guys remember that? Right? So you're just multiplying. Okay, and then on the right side, how many zeros do you get? If you multiply 550 times 1,000, you get how many zeros? Four zeros, very good. Do you get four zeros? Yeah. Yes, you get three, and yeah, you're right. So be careful, because if you leave out a zero, guess what? Are you gonna get the right answer? No. no, because you have 500, right? Remember, if you multiply by 1,000, you add three zeros to it, to that number, easy, right? Right. Just like if you multiply a number by 10, you just add one zero, right? If you multiply something by 1,000, you add three zeros. Okay, so then now I'm going to uh, distribute 65 to 8,000, minus x. That's when you distribute. Does that make sense? Okay. Of course, when I do this, I get eight. What is 65 times 8,000? It becomes, oh, it becomes 520,000. Okay. And then, of course, 65 times negative x, you get 65x. Are you okay with that? All right. And, of course, what are we going to do next? We have to gather all the x's, right, on the left side. We got 80x, negative 65x. What's that give you? 15x, and we're going to subtract both sides by 520,000. What do you end up getting on the right side? Yeah, you get 30,000, correct? Now all you have to do is divide both sides by 15, and when you do, how many times does 3 go into 30? I mean, 15 going to 30, twice. So what do you get at the end? 2,000. So what have we found? What does x represent? Go back to your problem now. Go back to your problem. Let's go all the way up. What do we say x was? x was d. How much invested in which percent? 8% stock, right? So what have we found here? He invested $2,000 for 8% stock. What about the other one then? How do we find the other amount? Well, he invested, Brandon? <coughs> yeah, 8,000 minus 2,000, which is? 6,000. So that's how much you invested on the other stock. Do you see how this works out? Okay. Does this make sense? Yes? Okay. Any questions? So I wrote it up here like this, right? How do we get 6,000? It's 8,000 minus 2,000, right? Because that's how we define the other. Any question? Okay. okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to have you try example two on your own, well, as a group, okay? So it says, Johnson's invested a sum of money at 10%. They could have earned the same interest by investing 1,600 less at 12%. How much did they invest? Okay. So, first of all, what does this mean? What's going on here? Johnson's invested a sum of money at 10%. What is it saying? What is the unknown in this case? I guess that's what I should be asking. What's the unknown here? So Johnson's invested some of money at 10%. They could have earned the same interest by investing $1,600 I mean less at 12%. How much did they invest? Yes, uh, how about, what do you think? What's the unknown? Yes. It's the amount of money that Johnson's invested is the unknown, right? But what do they mean by this? They could have, have earned the same interest by investing uh, 1,600 <coughs> less at 12%. Who could explain that part? Okay, I understand they invested some money at 10%. That's easy, right? If you let X to be what? The amount that they invested, right? At 10%. How can you find the interest rate for that? Okay. Think about this. What do you guys think? So. How would you figure this out? How much, well, can you figure out the in interest that he, they would have received? Um, uh, in other words, the uh, income? Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. Exactly, so well, first of all, we could figure out the interest, right? What is the interest? 
what is the income that you get for uh, investing X amount of money? For 10%, well, it's X times 10%, which is? Yeah, 10 over 100, which is 0 0.1. Isn't that right? Is that okay? Well, if you multiply 0 0.1 times whatever the X is, that's the Im interest that you get. And, but what are they saying here? They could have earned the same interest, okay, by investing uh, 1,600 less. And of course, you know, the interest rate is higher, right? That's how you get this. Okay, go ahead. Everybody think about this. Uh, how, we, how can you come up with an equation with this? Go ahead. If we let X be how much invested in 10%, how are you going to come up with the equation for this? Okay, go ahead. Everybody think as a group. I'll help you after you guys think about this. Okay. Oh, by the way, what's the other unknown? How much did he invest on the 12% one? X minus. X minus? X minus what? Yeah, that's easy, right? Isn't that how much you invest on the other one? Right? Okay, so how do you how you come up, how are you gonna come up with the equation now? Go ahead, everybody think about this. Do you think you're gonna need a chart like before? Yeah, okay, go ahead, everybody think about it. Okay, are you all okay with this? Right, so far? Right, we let X to be how much invested for ten percent, then how much did he invest? He could have invested for twelve percent with lesser money, right? X minus uh, one thousand six uh, one thousand six hundred. So let's put this into the chart. Just like before, interest rate times amount. Uh, equals interest. What is the interest rate for 10%? That's sort of a easy question. No, interest rate for 10%? 1 over? Is it 1 over 100? It's 10 over 100, which is? 1 over 10, which is 0 0.1. What is the uh, interest rate for 12%? 12 over? 100, which is? 0.12, okay, so there you go. Is that okay? Is that easy? Right? Well, what about the amount that the person invested for 10%? Yeah. X, what about the other one? X minus is 1,600 less, right? Well, at the end, what's the interest? We just said this before. We just talked about this before. What's the interest for 10%? Uh, yeah. 0.1x. Yeah, 0.1x. The other is? Yeah, and how are we going to come up with the equation now? E-Ray had a question. E-Ray, now do you see, what do they say? If they would have invested 10%, uh, the amount of interest would be the same as if they were to invest in this 12% with less money. So what's your equation going to be? 0.1x Yeah. These two interest rates are, I mean, these two interests will be the same. Annie, does that answer your question? Do you always have to add these interests? No, it depends on what kind of question they give you, right? This time, Annie, they'll be equal to each other, correct? So that's your equation. Everybody okay with that? I mean, uh, 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 sorry. Um, Amy. So Amy, so do you see how it is, this equation you get? Okay, so now do you know how to solve? What are you going to multiply both sides by? So get rid of all the denominators, multiply both sides by? 100. Okay, go ahead, everybody finish it up, see what you get. I'll wait for you. All right, so let's... So we multiply both sides by what, guys? 100, like this. Who could tell me what we get on the left side? By the way, how many things are we multiplying on the left side? Three things. 100, 0.1, and x, right? So you multiply two at a time. Okay, so what do we get here? Uh, how about Audrey? On the left side, it will be? 10x. 10x. On the right side, again, we're multiplying three things, right? So are you going to multiply 100 with both of these factors? No, you're going to multiply two at a time. Alvin, what do we get on the right side? On the right side? Yeah. Um, 12 times. Oh, just times x minus 16. Yeah, times x minus 16. Because you multiply two things at a time, right? You don't multiply right, 100 with 0.12 and then the other one. Those are factors, right? They're not terms, are they? Okay, here now you have to multiply 12 times both of these terms, correct? When you do, you get x, 10x equals 12x minus. Uh, 19, yeah, uh, 100, 90, 200, right? Okay, then 192, yeah. And then you subtract both sides by 12x. You get negative 2x equals to negative uh, 19,200. Then you divide both sides by negative 2. How many people got 9,600 as tx? Very good. So what does that mean? How much did the person invest? <laughs> well, 10%. 9,000. 600, okay? So there's the answer.
And if, if the person would have invested a uh, little less, oh, if the person would have invested 8,000, okay, for 12%, they would have had the same amount of money at the end of the year. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, any questions? No. All right.